Hello and welcome to the CS2 Plus C show. A big shout out to Betway, our partners. Check out betway.co.za for more information. Now, he is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, except if you're facing him in international cricket. His name is Kajiso Rabada. KG, thanks so much for coming and hanging out, man. And, and congratulations on all the things. You're doing amazing work at the moment. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. I know uh, you reached out to me a while back and I was always interested on, in coming in and yeah, this is it's cool to be here. So, so what do you think so far? I mean, Ray, my executive producer, has done a pretty good job, right? Yeah, I think it looks pretty awesome. Uh, and uh, the power of podcasting, uh, I reckon, is is on the rise and it's pretty cool. So I think you guys have done a, a sweet job at, at kitting this place out. Ray, can we please clip that and put that on our YouTube? Uh, and CV. Yeah, and just put it on the CV. <laughs> We've got the ultimate endorsement yeah. here. <laughs> Uh, but KG, I think first and foremost, um, it was so cool to see you in action. I mean, obviously seeing you in action for many years now, I think I actually, if I remember your debut, I was um, on uh, one of the commentary teams there when you made your debut. But then the other day being able to hang out with you and see what you're doing with your Fast Bowling Academy, man, that was unbelievable. The amount of information you're sharing the talented youngsters looking up to you. Tell us a bit more how this all came about and, and what the future holds for it. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> when you speak about my, my debut, um, ever since I can remember, you know, I've I always wanted to to uh, start or launch a fast bowling academy and to give back um, and to see the, the next crop of, of fast bowlers who are going to come up in the country uh, because I think it's a passion, you know, um, just like everyone has a passion. Uh, I I learned to love the the art of fast bowling, and um, yeah, the time has come. I'm really glad that I, I have the support structures around me who uh, were able to assist in making it happen. And yeah, the goal is basically to unearth and uh, develop fast bowling talent uh, from a holistic uh, point of view. You see, cricket is growing now uh, globally, and um, fast bowling is an art that. Uh, people love to watch and yeah that's the whole goal is to to nurture them and and to give them a taste of what being a professional athlete is all about at a young age yeah i mean what struck me the most was you had you had a few other coaches there i think garnet kruger was one of the guys mm -hmm. in the mix there and just to name some of them um at the at the wanderers yeah but it was breaking down fast bowling into like sort of smaller components because everyone thinks it's about taking the ball to the top of the mark and trying to bowl as fast as you can. And there was one thing that stood out for me. There was a, a kid that was bowling, but you picked up something and he was trying to bowl quick because he had the speed gun out. I mean, yeah. the, I mean, a teenage kid, if you're going, ah, oh, the speed gun, of course you're going to try and bowl as fast as possible. Yeah. But you said to him, it's about sort of bowling there, you know, putting, not looking down um, and worrying about where you're going to land or the no ball. It's about bowling there. And I think imparting that advice just gives those kids – um, the next sort of level, the the next opportunity, that self belief, and I'm thinking if someone had done that for you back in the day, um, just to be able to break it down on that level, who'd actually been there, I imagine just how much confidence that gives you as a young kid who's trying to bowl fast, who knows potentially they can bowl very fast. Yeah, exactly. I think you know you you I've learned a lot in my career thus far, and I feel like I can uh, impart some knowledge on on some players. You know, I don't have a level three. Um, bowling uh, a, a bowling coach or coaching certificate, but um, what I can do is impart some of my experiences and, and teachings. And uh, you mentioned that uh, there were a lot of stations um, at the at the at the clinic, but uh, bowling is is a very technical thing. The action is 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 ex actually very technical. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about uh, changing somebody and and making them something completely different. I think it's about letting them understand. Sorry, the fundamentals mm. of of fast bowling, and then once you have the technical aspect, then you look at the tactic, and then you look at the mindset. Um, those all come together, and I think those make a, a good bowler. And um, at the moment, I'm still learning. Mm. I'm still learning about my own game. Yeah, you never stop learning. Um, Even with 60 tests under your, your no, belt, right? Not at all. You never, ever stop learning. It's amazing. There's always something to work on, always something to reinforce. Uh, the day you stop learning is the day you must hang your boots up. You know, we, you hear that a lot. Yeah. I'm sure I'm not the first person to say that. Um, so, and I guess 
for me, you know, uh, growing growing up, I, I actually used to bowl to any touring sides that used to come over. Uh, if they were playing at the Wanderers, okay. I remember bowling at Australia when I was about 17. I bowled uh, a few times to the South African guys. Um, and for me, that was like really inspiring. So um, if, if, if certain teenage teenagers feel as if um, it would be inspiring for them yep. to see me there, then I think it's the same effect, really. That's, that's all that's happening. I love the fact that you had the speed guns out there because there is nothing like watching a fast bowler. And I mean, we've seen you in action, you know, going 140 plus clicks. Um, these kids, you can see that they are so passionate about the game and watching you in action, I could see how much passion you have to give back. Um, but at the same time, I'm just thinking like, that exposure it can only bode well for these kids, man. Even if they don't make it, maybe they go into coaching. Maybe they they end up being sort of, you know, on the periphery of cricket. Um, but still, it's that access they have to you. And I think hats off to you, man. That's that's fantastic. No, thank you. Yeah, you mentioned that um, you know, the chances of every single kid making it to play at a professional level is impossible. But at least if they're playing school cricket or club cricket or provincial cricket, at least they can enjoy their game and look towards improving their game. And if you look at the club systems and you want to uplift the cricket in South Africa, um, you look at the clubbing systems and you want the, the kids to to also go there and impart some of that, that knowledge, you know. Um, so that's all you're doing is you're bringing the love into the game. And also the fast bowling uh, it's it's the best feeling when you when you're bowling quick and you're on top of your game, um, and it's also great to watch too. I remember playing at at Lords. Um, that's uh, that was the first time I got five for at Lords in the first innings, and then in the second innings, um, I think we won. Yeah, we won that game by an innings and I think fifteen and runs you or something. Them. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think as as a bowling unit uh, with Lungi and and Marco and Anna, I think we we did really well. But I, 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 everyone lifted their hands. But that spell that uh, Einrich bowled um, in that afternoon was probably the quickest spell I've ever seen um, in my life. Really, and uh, you could see that just the whole stadium was just on edge. Um, yeah, so, I mean, extreme pace. You still want to, you still want the urge to to bowl that that extreme pace because it's just entertaining. Yeah, when you see someone like Andrik Nokia firing at 150 plus or whatever it is, does that fire you up? Because I, I know that you're capable of going up there and being in that consistently, but I'm sure that fires you up. You're like, come on, skipper, give me the ball, let's go. Yeah, I wish I could bowl fast all the time. <laughs> so sometimes it clicks, sometimes it doesn't. But like I said, you're always learning. So you want to try find out um, how you could do that on a yeah. more consistent basis. But when a bowler is on, you know, of course, it uplifts you and it, it makes you want to bowl well too. Um, but sometimes, you know, you, you still need to remain true to your strengths. Tell me, it is a feel thing, right? The top of the mark, the rhythm, you know, and, and as someone who's been playing, I mean, 2015, if I'm not mistaken, is when you made your, uh, your, your professional career, if I can put it that way, international career. That's nine years. Um, you get to know your body pretty well. And I imagine, and it's something you impart on the young fasters, bowlers is listening to your body, right? Yeah. And at the top of the mark, I think once you've had a run through and checked the mark and you've marked out everything, you kind of have a feeling like it's going to work today or I'm going to have to work to make it work today. Yeah, sometimes you, you go on the field and you're like, man, how, how am I going to bowl today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. And um, some days you feel great and you just, don't do as well when you're not feeling great. But for me, I think it's about finding a way. Yeah, uh, That's what I've learned to to try and incorporate is finding a way and just being relentless. Uh, just a never say die attitude. Uh, uh, once it does get to a stage where you are getting a bit of tap around, then it's just like, well, it can't get any worse than this, can it? Yeah. Oh, well, I got hit for quite a few sixes, <laughs> but can it get worse? No, it can't. <laughs> But uh, you know you'll be back the next day. But it's, I guess it's just about finding a way. Mm. I don't know how you're going to do it, but find a way. When you're at training, there you can focus on some technical um, aspects of your game. 
But I think when you're in the competition, it's just about finding a way there, trying to be as practical as possible. And then hopefully it works out. And I imagine it's like post T session day four, you've been in the field for two days, bowling on a flat track, you know, to sort of like try and make something happen. Um, That becomes tricky, but that's for me where those world-class high performance athletes manage to do it. And if it's not someone who's doing something with a ball, like a spinner, um, it's a fast bowler who suddenly rushes someone and and it just triggers a whole set of events. Yeah, I mean, so many times, test like if I refer to test cricket, we've had some really great wins and I've been involved in some special teams with some special players. And there's never a time when you just feel like you're controlling the game. I, I can't remember, I can remember a few instances where I felt like we were just completely controlling the game. Otherwise, it's just completely neck and neck, and you can't you, you can't like let off. Mm. Sometimes it's like <laughs> we we've been on the res- sorry we've been on the receiving end sometimes, and um, there it's just about doing damage control yeah. and and playing for pride. Sometimes you just play for pride um, when you're staring at the loss, you know, right in your face. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you just play for pride, but that doesn't happen a lot. Uh, a lot, so I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Touch wood. <Yeah. laughs> but um, finding something special, like you say, it, it could come from. It just comes from raw emotion, mm-hmm. as much as it does come it, as it does come from tactics. But that's just like somebody doing something out of the ordinary. Yeah. And if you can get a lot of um, uh, performances like that. Within a team, it means you're in a special team. Absolutely. And like you say, you have been in some special teams with some incredible cricketers over the years. Um, And and lastly, just to to get back to your your academy, is it about telling these young kids to work out game plans and execute? Or what is that sort of bottom line of advice that you give to them? Because I know it's a cliche, but everyone says, have fun. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it is largely to do with having fun and enjoying yeah. yourself because that's how you express yourself and play, right? Yeah. The best of you comes up. But what is that sort of baseline advice that you, you give to to the kids and to the many other generations of kids that are going to come through your academies and hopefully, touch wood, play for South Africa and, and follow in your incredible footsteps? I think the, the first thing is is pretty self-explanatory and that is you want to be you want to learn about fast bowling. And you want to be a, a great fast bowler, but at the same time, when you look at fun, fun could mean you know um, doing a bowling drill where you put some stake on it, um, or aiming aiming at a target and seeing who's going to hit it the most, and placing a bet on it, you know. Um, and yeah, I mean, you you need to have fun. If maybe if it's a warm up and you you play some footy or. <laughs> You know, because um, we're still sportsmen, we, we're athletes, and you, you want to have that element of excitement. Say, okay, who can bowl the quickest ball? Let's see, let's let's see who can bowl the quickest. Or uh, uh, you, you can have scenarios in the nets where guys become competitive. Or if you're doing Yorker bowling drills and you, you use like uh, bottles, 500 milliliter bottles, and you put some water in there, but take the cap off, and you just want to see that bottle explode. <laughs> yeah. You know, certain things like that. Um, uh, but but generally, it's it's mainly about just being a great bowler. Yeah, yeah. There must be no better feeling than castling a batsman, and especially a world class batsman. And you've done that a few times. Yeah. But like, is that? You know, one of those like feelings like, damn, man, that was cool sort of thing, you know, like maybe just take us there because it must, you at the top of your mark, obviously no, you're trying to set them up into playing a shot or you have a game plan to a, a David Warner, whoever it is, uh, regardless of the format. But when you actually castle them, I mean, that's a pretty sick feeling. Yeah, it is a nice feeling, especially when you're on your game. Yeah. Um, bold is, is a very nice dismissal. <laughs> and whereas when you're on top, you just feel like untouchable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you almost hope for it to happen a lot, but it feels like it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. But when you're on top, you just feel untouchable. If you have a look at um, 
uh, bowlers in the past, um, guys who used to get a lot of bowls, guys who, who were good with reverse swing, you know, the likes of, if you watch Shane Warne bowl, or the likes of like Dale Stain or, you know, uh, Wasim Akram, and you, you see them castling the, the stumps and you also want to do that. And you, you can understand why bowlers, they celebrate the way that they do because it's a, it's just an, it's a, a feeling that, that you, you just feel like you're on top and you're just going to roll <laughs> anyone who, who comes up in front of you. Now, this um, is my house. Yeah. This is my house. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes you feel like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, it's a brilliant feeling. Um, uh, when you bowl someone or get a dismissal, have you ever thought of a trademark celebration? You know, like the football, I mean, the Ronaldo's of it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. we've seen Pereira do it and Adesanya now copy that and whatever else, shamo has got his boot. I mean... <laughs> You know, yeah. is that something that goes through your mind or is it because you're so caught up in that? I mean, I, I know it's emotion. I know it's like this It's this is fire, you know. But is it something you think about? Or? Um, no, not really. Um, maybe maybe I'll put my mind to it, you know, <laughs> um, just for the entertainment yeah, side. Like a trademark, some, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, uh, you you got you to gotta love the entertainment. Absolutely. You need the entertainment. The sport is entertainment yeah. and... Um, I don't know. Perhaps uh, I'll, I'll I'll think of something. But everything is is mainly just um, instinctive, yeah. uh, impulsive, really. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's also got you in trouble a little bit. It has. <laughs> it has. But but it's uh, part of the emotion, right? It's it's a part of the emotion. I mean, I think in that moment, I'm completely different to how I am yeah. when I'm off the field. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's the raw emotion. It just just comes at you. Um, cause you know, you, when you actually think about it and you go deep into it, you are looking at the world's best players playing against each other, wanting to be up on each other. That's yeah. what it is. And not the country's best, not, not the province best, but the world's best. Yeah. And these are athletes, professional athletes at the top of their game. And so the competitiveness is, is unmatched really. Yeah. Um, and uh, sometimes when you watch the rugby and you look at how hard they go, that's the intensity. You can feel it. Um, so, yeah, that's that's just the, the moment. And that's that's what you're playing for. Yeah. And at the end of the day, as a fast bowler, you're an apex predator. You're top of the food chain. Like, all due respect to spinners, <laughs> you know. Uh, but as a fast bowler, there's this uh, expectation Everyone sees you at the top of the mark, white, green, whatever color, blue. I mean, you've worn a couple of colors in your career um, with the respective franchises you play for, but they expect KG Rabada to be fierce, to be bowling fire and bowling gas every mm. time. And I suppose that comes with the territory, doesn't it? That it expectation. Does, yeah, it does come with the territory. And um, I mean, I remember when we got knocked out of the 2016 T20 World Cup. And it was my first World Cup that I went to, and we had a brilliant side, and we, we didn't make it through to the the playoffs. But um, I remember, I think I, I bowled the, the last over against the West Indies, and we needed to win that game. Uh, and I think I needed to defend 15, but I couldn't do it. And um, um, I was on Twitter, and you know, I was just like, oh, I'm going to read the comments. Yeah. And um, I, I read them, and you know, you had like a a 13 year old telling me that I was, I was, I was shit. No. And I found it quite hilarious to be honest. <laughs> and then you, you see, you see, uh, the, the, the guys are having arguments on this. <laughs> a guy's like, Oh, you're 13. What do you know about cricket? <laughs> then the guy replies, Oh no, I played for this provincial action cricket team. I know my cricket. <laughs> it's so funny to see, but I mean, um, the expectation is there and we put a lot of expectation on ourselves. Yeah. And you just have to to bend down to to the reality of it. Um, there's no there's no point sobbing about yeah. it. But at the same time, we we love the fact that the fans are out there to to support us. You yeah. know, when the stadium is full, and uh, it's 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 nice to see that the fans are are literally behind us. Um, yeah, and I think the the older you get as well the more you, you have to look at other aspects of your game. So it's not only just about bowling fast. You know, it's it's a game at yeah. the end of the day. You, uh, at least to me, you know, you have to 
you have to be uh, quite tactically astute sure. and uh, have an instinct for, for the game. Uh, I think most of the time that instinct will, will take you through because it's impossible to bowl 150 yeah. every single game. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, what, what is your take on social media? Um, some professional athletes love it. Some professional athletes hate it. Um, I read an interesting article the other day about that Letzile Tebojo from Botswana, the sprinter. Yeah. I think he's 20. He won silver in the 100 and bronze in the 200. I mean, Noah Lyle's cleaned up, but he was there and there's this young kid. And he said, after he made the conscious decision to take away social media from his life, mm. he said his life became a lot more simpler. Oh, really? Yeah. But I understand at the same time, if you have endorsements and you're marketing yourself as a brand and that, but where do you sort of lie with, with the social media side of things? Because I, I assume at times when it hasn't gone well, it's you don't really want to see the comments, but if it's been great, then you also want to see the comment. I, I, you know, I, I don't know how to really put it, but you know what I'm trying to to get at here is what is that relationship with social media? Because some players love it. You see them every day; they're doing something. If it's a story or whatever it is, but how does Kaki Sorabada feel about social media? For me, I think it's a great tool. To so what social media does it connect people? Mm. So I think it's a great tool to connect. Uh, athletes to uh, the supporters and to other g general people. Sure. And I think what that does, it helps to grow the game. Mm -hmm. So this is social media. Absolutely. And this this gives people insight into what it's like being a professional athlete or whatever yeah. profession you're in. And um, I think you, it's a great tool for for spreading awareness for you know the good things yeah um i think as an as an athlete you, you're always going to receive some kind of criticism and i think it's about accepting it and i think that if you're going to post um something then you should just realize that you're going to be judged on it and you should be happy to get judged on it sure as long as you've made the choice to do it but i think there's also a bad side to social mm. media i think Sometimes um, you might want to play for that praise. You know, if, you, if you're playing for that, then, then you've, you've forgotten about why you're actually playing. Yeah. You know, then, then you're trying to please um, other people um, in, the, in the wrong way. Yeah. And, and, and then some, because people won't always be on your side. Uh, it's actually quite fickle. But there are true supporters. However, it's it, social media can be incredibly fickle. Yeah, and I think that's when it becomes toxic. Sure. Um, so I just think it's about having the right um, guidance towards approaching yeah. social media because I think it's great, um, as I've stated earlier, mm. for for certain aspects. However, um, it's a tricky one. I guess getting off social media, it will make things a lot more simplistic and it allows you to focus. Yeah. Because social media, it's like, it's literally uh, like quick, grat uh, uh, instant gratification. Mm -hmm. And there's just so much content and you just, everyone, I'm sure everyone gets into this rabbit hole <laughs> um, and you end up focusing on that and you mm. stop focusing on what you actually need to be focusing yeah. on. So I can understand why he would say, um, that his life was a lot simpler. Is, is that also in part why at 28 years old now, you're looking at giving back in various forms? I mean, the Fast Building Academy is one thing. I know you've got the, little, the, uh, the, the production company project that you, you are uh, busy with, and I believe that's going very well. But there appears to be many aspects or facets to Kahiso Rabada at the moment. Is that something that's just come with maturity or is it something you've always wanted to do? I think getting older, you kind of find yourself and find yourself and and find other interests and doing something other than than cricket. Um, however, I think um, you need to understand that cricket for me, I need to understand rather that cricket for me is still the main the main activity in my life, and uh, it's something that I must still devote my my, my greatest attention mm. to. So what it's, it's mainly about just compartmentalizing, really, um, and realizing that there's more to life. Um, 
but I still have my my passion for cricket. Um, that I'm not going to play cricket forever. Yeah. And um, setting up those structures right now um, helps you to, you know, to find a another path. Yeah. As as you you leave or exit the the cricket stage, not entirely, of course. I don't. I will still wish to do some work in cricket. One hundred percent. It's a sport that I love. Um, would that be coaching, or would it be doing analysis, commentary, sort of thing, or, or what, what? I mean, we've still got time. Like, there's still a couple seasons. Yeah. Um, but somewhere in the back of your mind, I mean, clearly it is. It is. Um, I think well, I'll make a decision closer yeah, to sure. the time I need to to think about it. Yeah. But right now it's cricket 100%. Um, and when I do have time, um, then I'll devote that time to my other interests. Sure. Um, KG, you've played all over the world, man. And recently in the US, I mean, it's a new sort of league that's that started. Um, it seems to me like cricket knows, and this is going to sound like such a cheesy line, no boundaries at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um because there's this global appetite for the sport. I mean, it's it's great to see. Yeah, T20 cricket is just growing. It's absolutely growing, um, and it's become lucrative. Um, and there's investment yeah. in it, um, and the investors have seen the returns. And so, you know, they they're trying to globalize the sport and 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 mm. tap into different markets. And uh, that's what they, they tried to do with the US. Well, and I think uh, they did a pretty good job at mm. it, really. The investment was there. The, the cricket was actually decent, uh, more than decent, actually. Um, the stadiums were, were good. The pitches played decently. So the logistics around the, the competition went well. And um, the, 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 the support was really great. I mean, the support that you get the, from, the, from the subcontinent is huge. Yeah. And you can see, like cricket is is revolutionising. Ever since uh, Kerry Packer came in and commercialised yeah. the sport, now the commercialization is moving to another level. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 crazy how cricket is growing. It's and, and and it's affecting the the international circuit and how the the team dynamics are of the international circuit. Um, and, and and you know the the whole. Uh, mixing and matching mm. of players you, you don't you never see the same 11 all the time yeah. um and yeah it's, and players around the world are playing with each other so the whole thing is that it, it might actually move to a space um that's quite similar to football where you play for your franchise more now the icc are a bit under pressure because they need to still um sh show the importance of of international yeah. cricket which I think is key. Absolutely. Um, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I think first and foremost, representing your country uh, should be sort of, I suppose, number one for any kid growing up, right? But there's lots of time then to explore the T20 options. And if it fits into the calendar, then absolutely. Um, but it's interesting you said that because for the longest time, NBA, NFL, um, NHL, even the baseball, the, the the big sports in the U.S. have have sort of been the big ones. English Premier League has obviously been huge for a, for a long time now, but IPL's growth in the last few years has been astonishing. I think, if I'm not mistaken, they're almost as big as NFL, or if not bigger than NFL in terms of commercial value and eyeballs. It is insane. You in the heart of that. You've experienced that. What makes IPL such a special tournament? Because it just looks, there's always fans, there's great cricket, it's always competitive, It's and the, the production is, is amazing. So it must be insane to be a part of. Yeah. I think what makes it great are the eyeballs yeah. and uh, the investment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's rich investors and uh, a lot of people who love watching the game. And then what that's going to do is attract players to come um, and play the best players in the world. And if you have the best players in the world all playing in one tournament, you've got a great product. Yeah. So that's why it does well. Yeah. I mean, and um, the, the experience is absolutely magical. Every game is, is literally packed. There's never a game where it's empty, really. Can you hear your teammates? COVID. 
<laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. That was the disaster. But can you hear your teammates when it's so loud in that stadium? Is it like mad? Is it like a buzz? Is it a hum? Maybe just for guys who've like Ray and I and, and people watching this and listening who've never been on the field for an IPL game, us mere mortals. Maybe just explain <laughs> what it's like. I mean, yeah, you, every, every game is, is a huge challenge. Every game you're bowling at a quality batters and every game batters are bowling, uh, play, uh, batting against uh, quality bowlers. So the competitiveness, as I, as I said earlier, is, is unmatched. And um, sometimes the wickets are a bit flat there, so <laughs> you really have to be on your mark. Um, and, um, and the rules are just favoring the batters more and more. <laughs> We're going to do something about that. And Come the boundaries on. are a bit smaller. <laughs> I mean, a 50 meter boundary. So you miss your mark, you, you That's fetching. about this big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? What's going on here? <laughs> Do you want to make it any easier for them? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... The, the, the one game, actually the loudest I've played in was my debut tour. Not my debut tour, sorry. It was uh, 20... 15 or 16 when we played India in India. We had a brilliant team. They had a brilliant team. We actually ended up winning that series 3-2. For me, that's probably the hardest and the most exciting series I've played in in ODI cricket. Okay. And I remember we went to, I think we went to uh, a place called Indoor. And I was bowling. I opened the bowling with Dale. And he was running in. I'm standing at third man, and he's running in from the top. And the first, the first ball he goes up to bowl. I've never heard anything as loud as that, ever. Really? Um, ever to this day, because I think it was one of the venues actually where they didn't actually visit too much. Okay. Uh, so we're on the bus, and so now they see us from the airport. They're tracking us, and um, they're about 40, 50 bikes. And most of them have two people on them <laughs> and they don't have helmets on. Oh, wow. They're driving next to the bus on the, on these motorcycles and they're out like us. Some, so the drive, some of the drivers are out like us with their phones. Oh, wow. And it was just remarkable to see. Eventually, so we thinking you know, if one guy hits another, then this is going to be a huge accident. Yeah. And it actually happened. No. It actually happened. But anyway, so I run up to bowl my second over bowling to Rohit Sharma and I remember running in and normally you can hear yourself breathing and you can hear your footsteps, but I couldn't hear anything. It was absolutely ridiculous. I almost pulled out of the run-up. <laughs> yeah, this is not right. <laughs> it's like I'm in, in the middle of my run-up, but I've forgotten about, <laughs> I've forgotten about the batter. Yeah. And there's I'm a like, pretty good batter on I'm the like, other side. This is loud. Yeah. <laughs> that was That's amazing. Eh? Yeah. Um, Looking at your career so far, I mean, there's been some amazing series and there's been some amazing players. But I, I imagine a guy like Dale Stain uh, played a huge part in, in your career. I mean, first a, a, as, a, as a partner in crime, if I can put it that way, or in, in, in fast bowling, but just as an incredible human being, right? Yeah, I think Dale is, you know, he loves his fishing. Uh, he loves his surfing. He's a pretty laid back guy. Um, for me, the way that, I saw, I learned from Dale was just watching him prepare and just watching him go about his business. But also on the side, you know, he 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 just has a a chilled and humble life mm -hmm. where he just does what he enjoys doing, and um, that's that's really what I looked at. I looked at the way he prepared. He had great pride in the way that he played. Everyone did, mm -hmm. but if you're speaking of Dale Stain. That's what I learned from him. He wasn't one to come up and give me a lot of advice, but that's just the way my relationship was with him and the way that I learned from him. And just being in that team at a young age and watching how everyone prepares, that was really like something to see. Yeah. I'd say the guys who would, who would give me advice verbally were guys like uh, Mone Morco um, and uh, Vernon Philander. Um, I think I had more conversations with them and, um, um, uh, uh, Hashim Amla, yeah. uh, A.B. De Villiers. Um, I enjoyed chatting cricket, uh, to, to guys like that. Um, 
yeah, not to say I didn't learn from anyone else, but I would say verbally, those are the guys who I engaged in cricket conversation yeah. with. Would you say you're a student of the game of cricket? I think you have to be. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Just absorb and learn and adapt and apply. Yeah, 100%. Um, even now, the game is evolving. You know, you, if you don't step step up to the way the game is evolving, then you'll be left behind. Yeah. But at the same time, it's still about keeping the basics, but the game is evolving. Yeah. So you need to find a way to, to, to work that out. When you see a guy like Joe Root reverse slap in a test match, you're like, what is going on with cricket? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not a shot. You're supposed to play at Lords or wherever <laughs> it is, but that's where cricket is, right? It's about finding ways to score runs. And if it means innovation, if it means making the bowler think, then I suppose, why not? The, the whole basball cricket, if there's been a lot made of it, but for the purists, they'll be like, no, 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 I can't watch this. But at the end of the day, it's a fascinating tussle because it is a game of strategy and execution. Yes, big time. So now when you see Joe Root play that shot and you're like, okay, now how do we stop that? Yeah. <laughs> because well, it's like, okay, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> or I don't know, uh, mind games or bowl different lines, different lengths. I guess I guess all the all all that the batters try to do is they try to put you off. Mm. That's all that they try to do. So when you go into a game, you go into a game with a game plan, mm -hmm. but then you still need that instinctive feel for the game. And that comes from um, observing certain things. It comes from analysis. It comes from the way that you view the game. Because everyone is different. Yeah, That's why not every player is the same. So you have to prepare. But when you're in the moment based on what you've absorbed, as you said earlier, then that's when you actually form like backup plans yeah. in the moment. Sure. Um, it's always interesting. Have you come up against a batsman in your career? And I'm sure there've been times where it's been like, how am I going to get this guy out? I'm sure there's times because we are blessed. And I'm not just saying, you know, in South Africa, but we're blessed around the world to have some incredible batsmen to watch. And you've had the privilege to play against them. Is there one particular guy that you go like, oh my goodness, I'm going to bolt to them again and how do I get them out? Or is it uh, something that you see as a challenge each time? Like, I'm going to work you out. I'm going to get you out. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess yeah, every single batter really. Um, it's never, I, I, I love bowling against the best. And I think you want to get those, those guys out. Uh, no disrespect to, you know, every other cricketer, sure. but I love bowling at the best. It's not like a, oh no, here we go again type yeah. thing. And I think, um, sometimes when you do go for some tap or you don't have a, a great series or then that's just a game reminding you it, that's, that's just it pulling you, pulling you back. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it does. It just pulls you back if you're competitive. And yeah. If you view it like that, it's like, well, this was never meant to be easy. You know, you, it's... It's you called need, test cricket for a reason. It's called test cricket, <laughs> whatever format. Yeah. And you, that's where you need to test yourself as a, as a bowler, as an athlete, yeah. or whatever it is. As a human being. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and speaking of that, like cricket can also be, as you said, very cruel. I mean, you've been number one in the world, um, which is an amazing achievement. But cricket has a way of leveling you out, doesn't it? And, and making sure that you stay in your lane sometimes. But at the same time, cricket also has some amazing feelings. Yeah. Um, the highs and lows. And if you look at going into any major ICC tournament, a World Cup and stuff, like there's always, I suppose, and it goes for every nation, there's expectation, right? When you go into a World Cup, what are you sort of thinking about? I mean, you've been to a couple now. You, there's one around the corner in familiar territory, but... Is it a case of thinking on what KG Rabada can do to help South Africa play best cricket and get results? Or is it a, a more matured approach in, in terms of like you one of the leaders almost in the group now? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think um, over the last year and a bit, or rather over the last two or three, four months around there um, with the new appointment of the two coaches, there's a a certain way that we want to play. So like <clears throat> what that does is, is it gives a, a clear 
um, understanding to each and every player generically how we want to play. And as long as every player knows the direction that we headed in, then I think that's the first tick. And you might, might have heard the word positive and aggressive. That's what we're looking, that's how we're looking to play. And over the last two months, especially in the one day setup, we've, we've discussed our team values. We've discussed where we, where we want to go. And we, we sing a team song and it's mainly about uh, to those before us, to those to come. So it's about continuing that, that legacy and um, setting, it, setting it up for those to come. And so we, we've, we've, we've really dived deep into our culture um, to get that right, because in, in you know it hasn't really been the best road when it comes to cricket South Africa and all the negativity around yeah. it, and so we felt like we really needed uh, to get that right. And when it comes to um, how we want to play um, on the field, um, just upskilling, um, really focusing on on certain tactics, um, and buying into a, a team game plan. And that's, that's really where we are at at the moment. And I guess as a leader uh, in the team, it's about trying to live that as best as yeah. possible. But at the same time, it's about myself and how I feel like I want to perform. I need to set my own individual goals. Mm -hmm. But as long as they match the team, the team's goals, then I think that's important. And for me, it's about enjoying the game, not going in in it with um, and thinking about media. Earlier on, we talked about the toxic traits of social media. I mean, be, even before I played for South Africa, there was a choking tag. Yeah. So now if you're going to go into the World Cup thinking about that, first of all, you need to accept that people are going to say it. But it's actually getting in the way of you just wanting to go and, and, and perform. Yeah. So it's about removing all of that and and, and and playing as 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 a as your true self as your as a as a cricketer that wants to do well for for the team and also for for himself yeah and i think if you can keep the focus nice and linear and buy into the team game plan and as long as your goals are aligned with the team's goals then i think that's the way you should approach it i love it i love it i think that's the, the best way to go um, it's interesting. We've got a unique situation with the Springboks, obviously starting the, the the World Cup defense, title defense. You guys aren't long after that. Do you guys draw inspiration from from the box? I oh, mean, obviously, I know you're a huge, and we'll get to your MMA love just now, but you, I know you guys watch the games, but you draw inspiration. I mean, they're going for history. They're going for fourth World Cup title, two in a row. Only New Zealand have gone back to back before, yeah. but no one's gone four. Uh, they, they must fire you guys up a little bit now and then. 100%. They just seem to have found the formula. Eh? Yeah, they have. <laughs> That's what they, they've done. And if you look at New Zealand as well, with, they went through, what, a 24-year drought. And as soon as they won one, then they got another. That's right. So I think with South Africa, South African cricket, it just takes one. Yeah. You know, it takes one, one group to do it. Um so that's what that's what we're doing. But in terms of the Springboks, I mean, they've been phenomenal, and uh, I've got, I have some some friends in that team, um, and it's just it's lovely to watch. You see how the whole country gets behind the box when they play, it's because yeah, they they give their all, and um, yeah, there's uh, there's no words really. Yeah. I mean, they're just doing it. They're doing it. But I think the public tends to forget that. Yes, it's eighty minutes of rugby, right? You guys, a couple more hours out on a park. If it's if it's T twenty, if it's a test, if it's one day, whatever. You never get onto the park not wanting to give one hundred twenty percent, right? I mean, there's this. I suppose sometimes, oh well, KG's fielding at fine leg. What is he actually doing? KG's at fine leg, trying to cut off as many runs and take a catch if he needs to, and he's listening to his captain and he's thinking about what he's going to do in his next over, right? I mean, there is that perception, especially in our country sportsmen and women get put on pedestals and almost mm -hmm. expect to be superhumans every single game. Yeah. But it's not from a lack of trying because you are trying. When you wear that 
that green and gold, if it's a, a cricket jersey, a rugby jersey, whatever it is, you're giving everything for South Africa. You're giving everything that you got. Um, a, lot, a, lot, a lot goes into it if you want to perform at an elite level. And that's what the Springboks are doing. Mm. Um, so I guess it's about finding out what is going to allow you to perform at an elite level. Yeah. I think that's what it is. And that's ultimately what we are after. And then, you know, then it, then it has to do with, from there it has to do with certain things like your will, your determination, you know, all those cliche yeah. phrases. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think the ultimate goal is to try and understand how you, you're gonna perform at an elite level yeah. and do that for long, not just for one or two years, yeah, consistently. but for a long time. Yeah. And also do it in the moment where uh, in the clutch moment. I think that's important. And again, that's what the Springboks do as well. And they, they've just got the answers. They've got the answers. Mm, they seem to turn up when they really need to. Um, and I, I think that's a skill. Yeah. No doubts in your mind they'll defend the title? Well, oh, after that display, <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, it's a bit early to say, um, but... Again, I think they, they looked fantastic. Yeah. And I think if, if they play that way and negate any, any threats that come their way, then why not? Of course they can do it. I think the only thing standing in, in the Springboks way is a dodgy referee. I guess so. That's honestly, so. uh, honestly, and Ray and I, my executive producer, have talked about it often. He's like, oh, you know what? We'll get another Bryce Lawrence. We're screwed. And I'm like, well, that's the reality of, of playing at a World Cup. I actually asked uh, Scott Berger once. He came before he came uh, when we we're having a camp out in Pearl Valley, and and I said, you know, in, in cricket, there's so many variables, um, and like sometimes you wanna you you wanna control everything, but it's just impossible. And um, and I said, well, in rugby, it's there aren't that many variables. And the first thing he says, no, there is. It's the ref. <laughs> <laughs> hey, spot on, eh? Yeah. yeah uh, Skulkberg is a legend. Um, we've got a few more minutes, uh, KG, and then I have to let you go. I know you're a very busy man at the moment. You, you, When you came in here, we were we had some of the UFC on. Uh, we were huge fans, obviously, Drickus and Cameron and them. But I believe you watch a lot of the UFC too. Um, it's an incredible sport. Uh, but is it just part of the many other sports? I know you're a football fan also, um, but is it one of the many sports you watch and enjoy? Yeah, it's, I think it's, some people uh, think it's brutal to watch the UFC, but I just admire the the courage and, and the skill. And it's the fact that it's just two warriors out there battling it out. I think that's what gets me into it. Yeah. And to see, you know, all the different uh, skills and the different martial arts and, uh, the tactics behind it. I think that's what I appreciate about MMA. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, uh, the beef as well <laughs> and the entertainment yeah. around it. Um, yeah, and, and, and boxing as well. I, I just, I like to watch combat sports because of those reasons. Yeah. Now, look, I mean, we've spoiled for choice at the moment with, uh, with the combat sports. Lastly, um, what's next for KG Rabada? I know... Um, the World Cup's not far away, but but sort of what's in the the next few months of planning? I know there's a lot going on, but maybe you could share a little bit with what's what we should be looking out for and what you're up to. Yeah, so at the moment, um, on Monday we go into camp for the ODIs. So I wasn't in the uh, included. I wasn't included in the T20 squad, but we're going to prepare uh, against uh, uh, to to play against Australia in a fi in five ODIs, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and then. Um, the squad should be announced for the World Cup pretty soon. And um, yeah, let's see how that goes. And from there, I think it's about planning towards that. Yeah. Um, so now, this week I have been training. And I think on Monday is when you go full cricket mode. Got you. Yeah. Lastly, what would it mean to you to win a World Cup? I know you've won, won it under 19 level. Mm -hmm. And that was an, an amazing achievement in its own. But for you now, as someone who's given almost a decade of your life to the Proteas national senior men's team, what would it mean to you to win a World Cup? Yes, it would mean the world. Everything it would mean everything. I feel like that's the only thing missing in South African cricket. And um, because we, we play, we've played 
game in, game out, where we, I think we've made the country really proud. We've put in some magical performances. Uh, under pressure, we've done it. And I've been there, I've seen it. We've, we've done it on a lot of occasions. Yeah. We just need to do it on this occasion. And that would be absolutely lovely. Uh, there's a lot of importance behind behind going to a World Cup. I know the, the look at the pride that it yeah. gives to the people back home. It's fantastic. KG Rabada, thank you for being such a great sport. Thanks for being an incredible ambassador for South Africa, for giving back to the sport. And uh, we wish you all the best for the World Cup and keep up uh, the, the hard graft and, and being an apex predator, being a world-class fast bowler. Uh, we really enjoy watching you and we wish you all the best. Cheers. Thanks, Sias. Thanks for having me, man. That's always, always welcome. Uh, Ray's already said there's a parking spot if you want one outside, so you're <laughs> welcome. KG Rabada, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching the CS Duplessis show and big shout out to our partners at Betway. Check out betway.co.za for more information.